I think I wouldn't Thank want you. to waste more time. Uh, let's go on to the next speaker, Miss Wani Ardi. She's a writer, a performer, an advocate and founder of MRKH Malaysia and also MRKH Nusantara. And her topic is also quite interesting uh, on a very, very, very personal level. Uh, it's called uh, The Art of Letting Go and Letting God. So hi, Wani. Uh, I've not met hi. you in person. Yeah, I've not talked to you in person yet, but um, I've heard so much about you. Maybe you want to um, share a bit about yourself <laughs> to everyone? Uh, hi everyone, I'm Wani. So as uh, Rita has introduced me, I am the founder of MRKH Malaysia and MRKH Nusantara. So for those who don't know what is MRKH, it's actually a condition, a congenital disorder where uh, females were born without uh, uterus, uh, without vagina, um, no period, uh, no pregnancy, and with abnormalities in kidneys and bladder, heart and skeletal, as well as hearing. So this rare disorder happens to one in every 4,500 to 5,000 women all around the world. Yep. Okay. Um, wow. That's um, something very personal. Um, you know, yep. um, it, it, I mean, just by you telling the statistic is... is it's very rare that you know you would feel someone you know is experiencing that right so if you don't mind yeah. can you share a bit a bit about your personal journey and when you founded mrkh uh, malaysia and also mrkh nusantara uh okay so i founded mrkh malaysia in 2014 um and to be honest my intention at that time was quite selfish because uh, that was the year when I quit my lecturing job. I was a lecturer for about seven years. So I was so used to giving back to the, to the society. Um, I was so used to educating people, um, you know, sharing things and things like that. So when I quit my job as a lecturer, I felt um, left out. I felt a bit lost. Um, I felt like my worth in this society has lessened somehow. So I wanted to do something that allowed me to um, give back to the society. And I was thinking of uh, this syndrome because, you know, being a right side performer for almost 20 years, um, I'm so used to being on stage, but the moment I have to speak about this very personal condition, um, it feels like I have to start from zero in terms of self-confidence, in terms of my self-esteem. So I thought, you know, um, I think this is something that the society needs to know about, uh, more people need to know about, and that's why I started MRK Malaysia. Honestly, uh, it felt very selfish. Uh, it was my nafsu to boost my ego, to be honest, you know. Uh, but then, um, after a couple of years, I realized that um, this is a real job and this is hard work. And this can actually help people and help myself in return. Because um, I, I grow so much um, from, you know, being a founder of a support group, uh, a safe space for what um, that started with just two members and now over 200 members. And I realized that um, it allows me to feel empowered. Uh, it allows others to feel empowered as well. And it allows me to help people, to help myself. Um, I realized that peer support is so, so important. And I only realized this um, because before I started MRKH Malaysia, I was part of um, a support group for MRKH women in the United States. And that was my very first time talking, even though just online, like what we're doing right now. But during that moment, it was my very first time looking at another person with the exact condition as me. And it felt so empowering. Like all my life, I thought I was alone. All my life, I thought um, I'm the only one who's, you know, not having um, uterus, not having vagina, not having period and all, and all that. And then suddenly I'm looking at someone who has the same condition as me. And just from that experience alone, um, I felt so empowered. So I decided that, you know, I want to give the same feeling to uh, other MRK girls 
in my country and yes yeah, so far we have um we have grew from MRK Malaysia to MRK Nusantara whereby uh, we also have members from Singapore, Indonesia and Brunei. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Um, uh, I think uh, just like you said, you know, you, you went to a support group uh, in the US and you actually found someone who shares the same journey as you do on a personal level. Yes. Um, so when you bring back here, um, how was it? I mean, it, was there any misconception from the women in our society? And how is it in your personal capacity that you overcome this with your resilient mind, your physical and emotional energy? Uh, definitely, because um, uh, compared to the support groups in Western countries, we in the Asian countries, we have our own, you know, um, our own culture. We have very different background compared to those in Western countries. So we have our own stigma, we have our own superstitions and things like that, that we have to deal with. Uh, we have different sets of belief and values, you know. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's very important for me to find peer support within the same culture, the same background, or at least the same region. And I realized that in Malaysia, the biggest misconception, uh, some of the biggest misconception is that uh, motherhood only happens through pregnancy like the moment you're unable to get pregnant or the moment uh you have infertility uh you immediately set in, in your mind i'm not gonna be a mom forever i cannot be a mom forever uh which is so wrong because i believe i personally believe that um there are so many ways for you to experience motherhood and i believe all women are mothers including women who prefer to be childless. Why? Because we all have maternal instincts. We are either mother to our kids or mother to our nieces and nephews, mother to our friends who need, um, you know, uh, shoulders and uh, extra shoulders, extra ears. Uh, we are mothers to our plants, you know, our cats, our dogs. Women are mothers, uh, whether we want it or not. It's, it's in us. It's in our nature, you know, the fact that we are so emotional, so sensitive, so alert of our surroundings makes our maternal instincts, you know, more than paternal instincts. This is something that I honestly believe. So, um, having said that, I must also stress out that marriage and having children is not the only form of happiness. This is another misconception. Marriage and having children is not the only form of happiness. There are so many forms of happiness. These two are just one of it. So um, I realized that women who experience infertility, they feel like that condition is the end of the world because they have set in their mind that marriage and having children is the ultimate achievement in life, you know, which is not right, which is not right. And um, I also, um, if you allow me to speak on um, another sensitive issue, which is sexual health, um, a lot of women, a lot of men uh, believe that uh, sexual intercourse is the only way to have a uh, healthy sexual life uh, and that is also a really big misconception you know um, to have a very healthy sexual life uh, sexual health intercourse is not the only thing like for us MRK women we are born without vagina we can have vagina after treatment after um, surgery but even if we don't choose to do all that there are so many ways you can explore relationship, you can explore intimacy. So these are the things that we should be open to talk about. So we have to fix our attitude towards speaking about gender, towards speaking about sexual health, sexual reproduction, because we are usually afraid of things that we don't know. And unless we talk about it, we will remain in ignorance. True, true, that's true. Um, yeah, to know is to love, correct? And another yeah. phrase that I really like is, uh, you know, to, to let go and to let God. Um, so how do you actually master to let go and to let God? And, you know, I and have your... not. <laughs> 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 how, how do you master that? Because it's a personal journey and 
Yes. And, yeah, it, it's, it's an inspiration actually. It's an inspiration to men and women out there who, you know, who goes through a similar journey, but they don't address it like you. And how, how do you advise them to stay resilient, to sustain that positivity every day? Um, uh, to begin with, it is not my place to advise anyone because I am still learning. I have not mastered the art of letting go and letting God. But um, I would suggest that uh, always begin by acknowledging what you can change and what you cannot change. Um, what you have control over and what you don't have control over. And also acknowledge that um, before strength, you have to go through um, moments of weakness first. There's no way that you can go straight to, you know, feeling confident and all that. Like I always um, tell my friends and tell myself, uh, keyakinan tak terbina semalaman. You know, self-confidence is not built in a night. You know, uh, it takes time. I acknowledge that and embrace that and um, focus on what we have instead of what we don't have. Um, and it's so important to get professional help, like what Kak Ngah said. Uh, I, um, I myself, uh, I got professional help. And it's also important to um, embrace the fact that support does not have to come from your family or your best friend. Support can come from other forms as well because um, kita kena faham orang yang tak faham kita. You know, unfortunately, sometimes kena macam tu. Kita kena faham orang yang tak faham kita. So uh, sometimes uh, our parents they don't have the capacity to support us merely because they were not born in that generation with all that awareness and knowledge you know so i think it's unfair for us to judge our parents like why are they not being caring of my mental health why are not being care why, why are they not being caring of my condition why, why don't they understand my struggle with my uh, you know gender issue or sexual issue they were not born in that generation so it's it's our responsibility to break that chain it starts with us we have to break that change and that's why we have to talk about it and go find support uh, from people who actually uh, love you, understand you. I bet as women with all of our senses and instincts, we already, we already know which kawan can support us and which kawan cannot support us. Which kawan will always come up with toxic positivity like Allah bersyukur lah, you know. Uh, Allah think of other people. Other people got got it worse than you, uh, you know. Like Allah chill je lah, relax, you know. We know, we already know that friend, and we already know other friends. Like what uh, Anita said, okay, okay, you cry, yes, yes, you curse, let it all out. So we stick to that friend when we need that kind of support. So don't feel, um, don't feel, um, what do you say? lemas mangat or don't give up, don't feel hopeless when you cannot find the support that you needed from your closest people. It doesn't have to be from your closest people. Right. Wow, that was really empowering. Um, you know, coming from yourself, your personal journey, that personal energy from yourself. Um, again, not many people understand what you went through or what you're going through right now, you know, and, and what you're constantly going through. But that was really empowering that, you know, it, it, I, I love how you put it that you have to understand people that doesn't understand you. You know, it, that's that's really empowering. And um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing your personal journey, Wani. Um, thank you. Thank you for next having time, me. Yeah, next time we have can have our separate conversation, right? So, uh, <laughs> because uh, we're also running out of time right now. So, I